Hello everyone, thanks for checking out this video. My name is Frank and in this video I'll review a desktop tutorial on hyperspectral core scanning that I've published on my website frankstutorials.nl. The tutorial is titled Spectral Mineralogy of a Porphyry Copper Pebble. This is a great exercise to learn more about drill core scanning with a, a shortwave infrared hyperspectral imager. The exercise shows how lab-based, high-resolution hyperspectral imaging provides very useful and subtle mineralogical information about mineralized rocks. Exploratory analysis of a hyperspectral image of a rock acquired at 0.2 mm uh, pixel size shows subtle, comp uh, subtle compositional variation in illite muscovite minerals that are related to copper mineralization and, as well, the occurrence of other relevant minerals. Methods in this exercise include wavelength mapping, interpretation of pixel spectra, and the use of shadow images. The exercise resulted from joint work with my colleagues at the faculty of ITC of the University of Twente and uh, with colleagues of Delft Technical University. Um, this review itself contains the following sections. Step one is a visual study uh, of a porphyry copper pebble from the Los Bronzes mine in Chile which is this one. Step two, viewing and interpretation of reflectance spectra of images uh, that were acquired of, from, this uh, from this pebble. Step three is the calculation of uh, wavelength image and a wavelength map. Step four, calculation of illite muscovite versus uh, kaolinite ratio. And step five is the calculation of the crystallinity of illite and muscovite. Okay. So, let's get started. The tutorial uh, can be downloaded from, uh, from my website, yeah, frankstutorials.nl. So this is what uh, the landing page uh, looks like. Um, and if you download the tutorial, then the, uh, the instructions, they, uh, uh, they look like this. A spectral mineralogy of a porphyry copper pebble. I will follow these, uh, these instructions and then uh, show you how the different steps have to be well, can be performed. Okay, so the first step is a, a visual study of the photo of the of the pebble. Um, this is what is uh, provided. Yeah, so this is a photograph of the of the pebble. Yeah, so yeah, this is what the actual size of the of the rock is. Uh, by the way, I'd like to thank um, Anglo America. Um, Mike Buxton and uh, Marinus Dahl for providing uh, this rock. Um, so, um, yeah, the first question is uh, in the instructions is, is really to give a general description of the rock, including rock type, texture, and uh, structures and veining. Well, what you can see it, uh, what you can see on the photo, and, and when you study the rock itself, uh, you can see it's an intrusive rock. It's a granite, um, but it's fractured. Uh, and it has uh, small veins and, and vein uh, fillings. Yeah, so yeah, so we can see a porphyritic uh, texture here. And um, here we can see a vein, and there we have another vein. Um, the wall rock is uh, is altered, and uh, new um, new minerals have been deposited yeah, in in these veins. Yeah, we can see these. Uh, Black, uh, black minerals, uh, yeah, mostly tourmaline. And uh, if you look carefully, you can also see that there are uh, sulfides uh, present, like, like here, for instance, at the spot G. <coughs> um, yeah, so can you recognize any of the minerals in this pebble? Uh, if, if, you, if you consider this, this granitic rock, then, um, yeah, so in gray, we find, uh, we find quartz. For instance, here you can see quartz. The black is uh, tourmaline. And the, the yellow shiny rock are, are sulfides and then mostly uh, uh, calcopyrite. Uh, pinkish is, is potassic feldspar, as you can see here. Um, white to greenish is, is, is likely plagioclase uh, here and, and here, for instance. Um, and, and well, if you look carefully, uh, you will see that uh, the, the feldspars have been altered. Um, yeah, to a fine-grained, uh, uh, shiny, uh, muscovite-like mineral. 
Um, so the next thing is then to examine uh, to examine these uh, uh, the spots that are indicated in this photo A to G, and uh, yeah, you have to uh, interpret the minerals and write down write it down in, in the table. Um, yeah, so the, the guess would be for 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 A. Yeah, this is one of these greenish phenocrysts. Yeah, that's likely to be uh, plagioclase. Could be altered. If we go to B, we, we see um, grayish, whitish minerals, uh, quartz, plagioclase, maybe with some muscovite. Uh, C is more pinkish, pinkish colored. Um, so uh, a guess will be that that's uh, potassium feldspar. And D, uh, this, this grayish uh, area uh, that's likely to be uh, to quar to be quartz. At E. We have this black mineral, yeah, we find here, but in other places as well, especially near fractures. Uh, that is, that's tourmaline. tourmaline. Uh, at F, we have uh, again quartz, but then with some, uh, some white minerals, could be feldspar or plagioclase. And at G, um, yeah, this is uh, clearly a sulfide. Yeah, let's, let's call that calcopyrite or, or pyrite. All right, so um, yeah, that is uh, that's step one. So that we have done without looking at the hyperspectral image, and now we're going to uh, um, to look at a hyperspectral image and see uh, what kind of information, uh, mineralogical information, we can uh, extract from this rock. Okay, we'll use hyperspectral Python and the software programmed by my colleague Wim Bakker. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's open. The menu, um, and the first thing is to uh, to display uh, to display the hyperspectral image. Okay, there it is. Um, it's this uh, image that has to be opened. Pavel sixty underscore hs. Okay, this is what the uh, the image looks like. Okay, this uh, this image looks uh, quite noisy. Um, so what we can do, uh, well, there, there are various things that we can do. Um, we can, for instance, look at the number of bands that are in there. Yeah, so we can click on here and then we go to uh, different uh, reflective bands. And in the bottom of this window, you can see the, um, the wavelength of the, of the band that's displayed. So in this case, it's band well, you see a 14 here uh, in the upper right. It's actually band 15 because uh, the first band is band zero. It's the Python logic, so you have to keep that in mind. Yeah. So, but then, uh, yeah, if we, well, we choose any band, we can see the, the wavelength. It's 1,125.3 or 0.4 nanometer. Okay. So, uh, yeah, these are the, all the different bands. Um, up to 255, so in total we have 255 plus one is 256 uh, uh, bands in here. Um, yeah, we can, you can use the wheel to uh, to zoom in and zoom out. And um, okay, let's go to to another band. So let's uh, say. 2130. We can click on the pixel like that, and then the pixel spectrum opens. Yeah, so here we can see in the reflected spectrum uh, of approximately 1000 to 2500 nanometer. Uh, and we can see clear absorption features at 2.2 .2 or 2200, 1900 something, and 1400, then 11. Okay, yeah, so we can. Uh, Open multiple spectra like that. Okay, the next thing is now to make a color composite of three different bands of the bands uh, uh, 30, 85, and 100, 185. Um, so the first thing is to uh, select color display, and then we can enter the bands here. Um, so this will be 30. Um, 30, you have to enter, otherwise it won't go to that band. Uh, this is number 
85 enter and 185 and that's that one 185 enter okay and now we can see some spectral contrast uh, you can uh, you can see that the hyperspectral image well the, the, the spatial resolution the pixel size is a bit uh, well, the pixel size is larger than, than the photo, but you can recognize uh, yeah, that. So the, 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 the texture here, you can see those um, uh, veins, and you can see the, uh, the accumulation of, of these dark minerals. Um, OK, well, what we're going to do now first is uh, extract some end members. I mean, they were already uh, given to you. Um, I selected them before. Um, and you have to go to uh, a table to um, to find coordinates um, of these uh, of the different M members. Um, so the table is yeah, is here. It's table two at the end of the exercise. And what you will do is now for each of those coordinates, you will. Um, um, You'll select the, the spectrum and then you'll save it as an, uh, as an end member. So the first one is uh, column 2, row 197. So that will be somewhere here. So you can see here at the bottom of the window the coordinates. Now we are at 396. So we, we have to go to 2 and 197. So this is the one. So if I click now, I get the pixel spectrum of that uh, of that pixel, it looks like this. Okay. Um, the next thing to do is to um, to open a values window. Go, you go to view. Uh, sorry, you go to info, and then uh, let me see a uh, values window. That would be um, show statistics. No, which one? Let me see. Oh, here, yes. I have to follow my own instructions better. Good, so uh, view uh, values window. Uh, that's not what I want. Okay, so, um, right, I have to select it again because it, now it remembered that I uh, asked for these statistics. So, and then I didn't get, I didn't get the right values. Okay, let's do this again. Yeah, this is the spectrum. Uh, we go to view values window yeah, and now we get an, um, a list of values uh, which is an x y spectrum so on the x the first column actually is the are the, the wavelengths and uh, the second column are the, the reflectance values so, yeah, so this is a spectrum in tabular form um, you can check if the uh, location is right so 2 comma 197. Yeah, that's that's the one we uh, we were after. Yeah, this one here. Okay, now we can say save, and then we save it to um, to a new folder. Um, right. Uh, let's go to C drive, Porphyry Copper Pebble, uh, data start. Yeah, that's the the folder that contains the data. Um, yeah, we'll call it the new folder and member and members um, image. Okay, and then the spectrum we call a underscore two underscore one nine seven, and then we have to give it an extension either txt or AC, uh, asc of ASCII. Um, okay, click save. All right. Um, well, this spectrum we can now uh, open within the spectral library viewer. So here under view, spectral library viewer. Um, and then we can uh, browse to that new folder. Uh, here and members image okay and then we can select it here I don't want to oops I don't want to uh, 
uh, remove the hull here. So uh, I said plot. And there, uh, yeah, we have the, the reflective spectrum again. Okay. Um, well, once we have this end member, yeah, we can try to, uh, to interpret it by comparison with, uh, with library spectra, for instance, from the, from the USDS. In order to compare them in the spectral library viewer, we have to put them in the same folder. Okay, so that's what I'll do uh, now. Um, so I go to this new uh, folder and members um, image. So this is the spectrum. So and I copy it to, to this one. Okay. And now if we browse, if we go to that folder, and yeah, we can see and members that were taken from the USDS the spectral library. And this is my, uh, my M member that I just saved. Okay. Okay. Well. Um, okay. We have seen that uh, this this uh, spectrum group contains quite a number of, of absorption features, uh, and we can compare them with the end members that are uh, in the USGS spectral library. So it's a selection of minerals that we expect in this rock. Um, well, one thing I can do first is to show all these uh, spectra in one window. Uh, like that. Okay, so these are on, these, so these are only the, the the spectra from the the USGS spectral library, and what you can see is that there is a number of uh, of member spectra that are spectrally almost flat, like for instance this blue one, this green, black, and this blue one, and those are albite and artite um, quartz. Um, let me see, L, uh, albite, anodite, uh, uh, quartz, uh, orthoclase. Um, yeah, so those are spectrally flat. Um, so these minerals, although they are very common in rocks, uh, they don't have a clear expression in the shortwave infrared. So, um, yeah, so um, they're not very helpful here in this, this exercise. Uh, if you want to study those minerals, it's better to look at the long wave infrared. Uh, and then there is uh, uh, calcopyrite here, this red line also, um, yeah, it's almost spectrally flat uh, in the shortwave infrared. Um, so also uh, we won't have much success in uh, <laughs> mapping it using diagnostic features. So if you want to map calcopyrite directly, uh, you should go to this wavelength range. So it's the visible wavelength range yeah, because it, it's a yellow mineral. You can see that it has a, a clear absorption feature here. So if you want to uh, map calcopyrite directly, you have to use a different wavelength range or the visible. Okay, and then there's uh, then there are a few other minerals that, that are spectrally active. That is, uh, in this case, elite, kaolinite, muscovite, and, and tourmaline. Tourmaline. Um, okay. So um, yeah, so I can make a selection uh, of these minerals and then to open together with uh, my my M member. That, uh, that, I, that I saved. Yeah, I like that. Um, the blue one is now uh, the, the spectrum from the porphyry copper pebble. Let's zoom in to the same wavelength range. So up to here. Okay. And now we can already see some differences and similarities. Yeah, so um, the blue one is now, let's say, the unknown that we have to uh, interpret. Uh, you can see that it is quite similar to the green one, which is an elite. Uh, only the, this wavelength position has, has a near uh, 2,100 and well, 2,200 actually. Yeah, it, it shifted a little bit, but here this this is at the same wavelength. This is at the same wavelength as the OH. This is OH and water, and then we have two features here, so they're they're quite similar. If we compare it to the red one, for instance, that is kaolinite, and you can see that kaolinite is different because it has a doublet feature here, yeah, which the blue one doesn't have. Well, it has maybe a slight deflection point, but it, it's, it doesn't have the, the feature here. Uh, these two features here at, at, uh, are at a different uh, wavelength position compared to these two. Um, what else? Uh, also at, at, at 
at uh, 1,400 nanometers. Kaolinite has a doublet feature and the blue one has not, so it's definitely not kaolinite. Um, what else do we have? Tourmaline. Well, you can see the tourmaline has two, two features here. Uh, this one coincides more or less, but then there's another one at uh, 2,200 and well, this 50, let's say. And then there's another one, the deep feature here, which okay, almost coincides with this feature here of, of uh, probably a light. Yeah, so it's not tourmaline either. Um, and then there is muscovite. Yeah, the cyan colored, uh, colored mineral spectrum. It looks quite similar to um, well, to the elite, the green elite spectrum, uh, but the difference is that uh, it has a relatively deep feature at, at uh, 2200 yeah, due to the aluminum hydroxyl bond and a shallow feature due to water. Yeah, so um, the ratio of the two is much uh, smaller. Uh, for muscovite than for illite, so that, that's the difference because muscovite doesn't contain as much uh, interlayer water as, as an illite uh, does. Um, okay, so if we compare these, then uh, we come to the conclusion that the blue one is, um, is an illite uh, because it has a relatively deep water feature compared to the aluminium hydroxyl feature. Um, although yeah, this aluminium hydroxyl feature has shifted a little bit, so that the composition of the illite is a bit different than uh, the one from the USGS spectral library in green. And we have, uh, okay, matching uh, fe other features as well. Okay, so, um, yeah, this, uh, this mineral we call illite then. Um, and then we can do the same for, for the other minerals. Yeah, so, we're talking about this, uh, this spectrum here, yeah, so that this the greenish spectrum, yeah, we thought, well, okay, maybe it looks like a plagioclase, but if we uh, look at the spectral signature, it, it's clearly that it contains illite. So it could be illite that has replaced uh, uh, plagioclase. Right. Um, let's, uh, well, we can do the same then with the other points. Um, yeah, okay, I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it now because that will take too much time. I will just uh, copy them. Okay, now they're all in the same uh, folder. Okay, now they're all here. Um, okay, and we, we can then do the same with, uh, with B, um, with C. Um, let me see, let's have a look at E as well. Okay, and so let's open this. Mm. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not zooming here. Um, let's zoom into this wavelength range because you can see that the shorter wavelength range shorter than a thousand nanometers it gets a bit noisy and the red curve gets a bit an unusual shape yeah, because it goes up towards the shorter wavelengths um, the blue one yeah it, it's well if you compare that with with Eli muscovite it looks pretty similar but then it's more like muscovite because there's a shallow water feature here compared to the aluminum hydroxyl feature here. So uh, this is uh, a muscovite. Uh, the greenish mineral, yeah, you can see that the end member is, has to, a doublet feature here and here as well. If you compare it with kaolinite, it's, it's uh, almost similar to, the, to kaolinite. So that's a kaolinite. Um, and the red spectrum is, uh, has, well, it has a low reflectivity. Yeah, so the, the, the the reflectance values are lower than 15%, uh, 0.15. So it's a dark mineral in the shortwave infrared. It has this doublet feature here and another feature here. And we saw that before, that's typical of tourmaline. And yeah, so that's tourmaline. Um, so B is coming from here. Uh, here we have muscovite, so this is this vein. Yeah. And originally in the table he said, well, we required maybe some plagioclase, but yeah, if we look at the spectrum, it's it's well, the only mineral we can identify is muscovite here. Yes, and then at C, uh, I've not shown, yes, I've shown that here as well. Uh, that was here, this, uh, uh, this reddish patch uh, or phenocryst previously is now uh, composed of 
of kaolinite um, and we, the other one e is uh, is this black mineral and it's, it's clearly uh, a tourmaline okay yeah so in this way we can interpret all the uh, all the end members by comparison with uh, the usgs spectral library um, okay and then we get this uh, this result yeah so we have a light muscovite kaolinite d that is uh, yeah, so, so quartz with a little bit of a light um, i haven't shown it here but you can do that yourself e is tourmaline we've seen that f mostly muscovite uh, here in this quartz rich area and then g is uh well i haven't shown it yet but it's it has a low re reflectivity and it's uh, yeah, typical, or could be calco, calco pyrite. Uh, but it's difficult to say because it's almost uh, featureless. Okay, um, right. So now we have looked at these uh, these end members. So we have some idea of the, the spectral diversity in the in this rock. Yeah? So we have elite, we have muscovite, we have um, that we can recognize as kaolinite, we have tourmaline. So those are the uh, the minerals that we can directly identify with, uh, with short wave infrared spectroscopy. Quartz, feldspars, we cannot. Okay. Yeah, Calcopyrite is a bit difficult yeah, because uh, it's also almost featureless. Okay, let's see if there's anything else that we have to answer here at this stage. Um, um, no, I think we have done this. Uh, Okay, we've, we've gone through uh, this part of the exercise. Yeah, so now we are going to uh, do some image processing. We're not only extracting uh, spectral end members, but we're going to process the image in order to see um, uh, the different, uh, well, the, the spectral variation within the image and see if we can find any indications for the presence of these, these, these end members that we have just identified. Okay, so I'll close this. So Keep that one open. Um, all right. It's good to keep the, the image here as well. Um, yeah, so the first thing is uh, now to, uh, to calculate a wavelength image. Um, so what we will do is um, for each pixels in this image, you cal calculate the deepest absorption feature between 2100 and 2400 nanometer. And therefore, we go to tools. Uh, it's uh, step one, wavelength of minimum. There the dialog appears. So the input is um, the hyperspectral image, this one, Pebble 60, score hyperspectral. We open it. Um, OK, automatically, an output file name is assigned. Uh, WAV2, so that's fine. Um, we have to define a wavelength range, yeah? so we want to look at the deepest feature and the depth between 2100 and 2400 nanometer. Uh, we want to first do a convex hull, well, removal by division over this wavelength range, uh, we, we want to match three features. So the deepest, the second deepest, and the third deepest. We don't want to do a broad feature fitting that is for broad features, and it's still a bit experimental, so I have to be careful if you choose that one. But we are we're looking at sharp features here. OK, then we say run. Um, OK, and it will take a few minutes. So we have to be patient. Um, if you're desperate for a cup of coffee, you have the time to, to get one quickly. And if not, you can then wait and, uh, until it's finished. Almost there.
Okay, it's completed. I can close this one. Uh, let's have a look at the result. We can open it in an image viewer because the result is another image. It's this one. We open it. Okay, and then I want to only I want to display single images here. Um, so it has six bands, uh, five plus one. Um, the first band is um, the wavelength position of the deepest feature. Yeah, so it says here interpolated minimum wavelength. So it, it's interpolated by filling in a, a second order polynomial um, a parabola to the feature. Um, and this is the result. Uh, we can uh, stretch it a bit better because we can't see a lot of variation. So we can do a histogram equalization and we can show it as uh, in rainbow colors and we get this. Okay. Um, so we can see that there is uh, quite a lot of variation in the wavelength position. So we have, for instance, in blue, a wavelength position of 2202. So that's relatively short. And then uh, in the, the reddish area, as it goes up to 2211, so 10 nanometers uh, more. Um, and then here in the reddish areas, it gets uh, to 2247. Um, okay. Uh, the second band is the depth of the deepest absorption feature. And you can also see a variation here. So the deepest features you find here along this fracture and here as well and here. Yeah, and then uh, for the rest here, you can see that it varies um, yeah, depending on the, 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 the crystals and in the precursor rock, most likely. Then the, the third band is um, and the wavelength position of the of the second feature, and the second deepest feature. So here it's 2,244, for instance. Um, here in red, it's 2,300 and about 60 more or less. Yeah, so there's also variation. Uh, you can also you can see some vertical striping. Um, so that is uh, that's noise. Um, then the the depth of the the second deepest feature. Um, you can also see systematic variation then. Um, oops, this one, this is the wavelength position of the third feature. And there's still some information because you can, you can see that there are uh, uh, still uh, relevant patterns uh, that appear in the image. And then the depth of the uh, third deepest absorption feature. And also there is still some variation. Okay, so uh, all this variation is because of different, uh, different minerals. Uh, let's go to uh, the deepest feature, the wavelength position of the deepest feature, and make an histogram. And then it looks like this. So this shows you the distribution of, uh, of deepest features. And you can see that the majority, uh, on the y-axis is the frequency, the majority is between 2200 and uh, 2212 yeah so that is a uh, light muscovite and kaolinite yeah? that's mostly and could also be um tourmaline yeah and then we're talking about the spectral minerals spectrally active minerals um but you can also see that there is an um a small bump here yeah so around 2445 yeah, that is a different mineral yeah and, uh, one guess is that it's tourmaline. Okay, but we'll investigate this um, a bit further. Um, okay, let's uh, let's see. Right. Um, yeah, we can also look at uh, again at the the depth of the deepest feature and make a histogram of that one and then you can see this uh, this histogram yeah going from well i think this is this is the shallowest feature at 0 0.04 and it goes to up to approximately 0 0.55 so that's 50 
95% reflectance. Yeah, the deepest features are more than uh, more than half, more than 50% uh, reflectance. <coughs> yeah, so that's also uh, the answer to the question. Yeah, what, what what reflectance in percentage do the deepest absorption features have? And that's approximately 50%. Okay, um, so the next thing is to again go to these, um, these end member locations and then, then uh, extract information about the, uh, uh, the absorption features that we have just calculated. Um, <clears throat> So what you'll do, uh, well, what we'll do first, I'll go to uh, the first location again. Um, yes, that's here. To 197. That's this one. Um, yeah, I click, click on the pixel. Oh, this is not so useful because it just shows the values of the, of the six different bands. Um, but we can again look at the values and then we can see the values for these uh, for these uh, different bands eh? so the first band band zero has the, the absorption feature uh, the, the wavelength position of the deepest absorption feature is it's 211 uh, the depth is um, eh, in the in the, the second band 0 0.35 when we round it off, so that's 35%. The second deepest feature is uh, uh, 2,353 nanometer, um, and the, the depth of that feature is 12%. And then we have an, a third deepest feature at 2,125, um, and the, uh, the depth is well, less than 1%. Yeah, so that is a tiny little feature. Well, let, let's check again with, uh, uh, with the spectrum itself, see if, it, if it's correct what we have, uh, have calculated here. Um, <coughs> uh, it was this one, so I'll plot it here. Yeah, so the deepest feature yeah, it's about 212. Okay, well, that's that's the interpolated. It's it's more accurate, but this one seems to be right. Um, well, we should actually do a continuum removal of the spectrum because that is how the depth was calculated here. Um, and then we zoom in to the range between 2100 and 2400, so it's like that. So this is the, basically the wavelength range that we have, we have looked at. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the the depth yeah is about uh, 35 percent. I think that, that that's quite all right. <clears throat> um, then the wavelength position of the second second deepest feature is 2,353. That should be this one. Yeah, that is about right. It's a bit to the left because it's interpolated. Yeah? It's it's a fitted fitted parabola. Um, you can see that the depth is a bit deeper here. That's about 15, 14, 15 percent. While um, in the wavelength image, it's about 12 percent. And that's because uh, the wavelength image was calculated on continuum removed spectra, which were removed between 2100 and 2400. Yeah, while the continuum in this spectrum is removed over the whole wavelength range, so that that gives a, a diff, uh, that, that explains the difference. Then the third deepest feature is at 2,125. 2,125. That's about here. Yeah, so apparently this was recognized as the third deepest feature. It's very shallow and it's difficult to to uh, differentiate that from noise. Okay, so we can check this for all the. Uh, for all the, the end member spectra, A up to G. Um, yeah, so um, if you want to learn more about the spectra, then you should definitely do that. Um, I'm not going to do that all here because it takes too much time, uh, but I can show you the results. Yeah, so um, you can fill it out, or well, you can fill out this table, yeah, and then you can see that. Uh, 
for these different minerals you get these different uh, values um, well if we look at all these minerals and yeah, they all have an absorption feature near 2000 uh, the deepest absorption feature between 2200 and uh, well 2 to 11 um, yeah so that that's clear uh, the calcopyrite has a very shallow absorption feature yeah, so it's, it's five percent so it's, it's almost to the level of noise while muscovite has a deep feature uh, kaolinite is muscovite and the light also tourmaline has a shallow feature because that's, that's also a, a darker mineral with uh, low reflectance um, what you can see is illite muscovite they have their second feature 2350 more or less uh, in contrast to kaolinite, it's 2,166, uh, which is at the shorter wavelengths yeah, because of this doublet. Um, and tourmaline, uh, that one is different. It has this doublet at shorter, relatively, uh, well, at, 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 uh, shorter, a bit longer wavelength than the uh, uh, the main absorption feature, um, yeah, and longer than, than, for instance, kaolinite. So it's at two. 1245 and uh, we noted that, that it has a third feature at longer wavelength so at the 2360 more or less okay um, so this is information now that um, that we can use to uh, yeah, to interpret uh, the minerals uh, in this in this image and to automatically interpret that Okay, but that's not what we're going to do right now. Um, let me see. Um, the next step is now to make an, another visualization of the wavelength image. We call it a wavelength map, where we combine the information with uh, with the depth of the uh, of the feature. Um, and that's uh, called uh, step two: wavelength mapping. You can find it here. Step two: wavelength mapping. Uh, this dialog appears, and now as an input, we need the wavelength image. Now yeah, with the six uh, bands. Uh, as an output, it will be. It's automatically assigned this name underscore map as the wavelength map. Um, well, we let me see what, uh, what do we want to see. We want to see um, a contrast between uh, 2200 and, and 2215 because there we find most of the uh, the differences. Um, we can stretch for depth, um, but you can also keep it to the to the default. And I think that it takes uh, it clips uh, one or two percent. Of values on both uh, on both sides, the low end and the high end, and then normally you get a good result. It doesn't work if your background uh, interferes, but I don't think we have the, that problem here. Um, so if the background produces unusual values, um, then it will influence your your stretching statistics. But uh, let's try this one first. Okay, I click a run. So you, you can see. The, the values of the automated uh, stretch, the depth values. Okay, uh, that's done. And let's have a look at the result. <clears throat> okay, so this is what we now see. Um, yeah, different colors mean different wavelength positions. Um, I have to open the um, the legend which is, is this one uh, underscore legend you can open it either as a, a pdf or a png i'll choose the png here okay this is the legend let's make it a bit smaller then we can compare it okay so different colors mean different wavelength positions of the deepest feature uh, and then the intensity of the color going from black to a uh, strong u represents the depth of the feature and you can see that uh, well, with this stretch, you can see that the deepest features are, are here along these fractures. Yeah? So they, they, those are uh, 
Muscovites with an, uh, an absorption wavelength at 2203 more or less. So they're relatively aluminium rich uh, because um, the more aluminium in octahedral sites, the, the shorter the wavelengths, uh, more if, if aluminium gets replaced by, um, uh, by iron and magnesium and uh, silicium, it gets longer wavelength uh, positions. Well, maybe not silicium, but uh, by iron and magnesium in octahedral sites. Um, okay, um, but then if we look at these these other uh, colors, yellow here, yeah, those are um, slightly longer wavelengths, 2108. So that could be typical of, of kaolinite, but also an, an illite, muscovite of intermediate uh, composition aluminium content and then we have these reddish uh, absorption features um, so at, at longer wavelengths yeah so there's more iron and magnesium in these uh, in these illite muscovites all right um, <clears throat> yeah then the next thing is uh, if you want to to know what the spectra look like of these uh, pixels with different colors. Um, then we open a shadow image. This is a very useful uh, method of, of, of showing the, the actual reflectance spectra. So I say open shadow and I have to then open uh, the hyperspectral image, which contains the, the reflective bands. And if I now click on a pixel, then I get the corresponding uh, reflectance spectrum. Yeah, so here this is uh, the spectrum of the cyan colored pixel. Let's zoom in a bit because we don't want to see all the noise, at, especially at the shorter wavelengths. Here we can see that there is a very a deep aluminum hydroxyl feature, a shallow water feature, a deep uh, OH feature, so typical of, of, of muscovite here, and these two uh, features as well. Yeah, if we now go to, to one of these reddish okay spectra um, yep let's do that one first because the, since I zoomed in um, I didn't get the, the real extent anymore the spectrum so okay um, Yeah, so these, these reddish uh, spectra, they have, uh, they have a uh, longer wavelength. We can also see that if we zoom in here, uh, they have more water. And you can see the difference between this and, and this. Um, we can also uh, check one of these uh, black pixels. Uh, you can see that still there is some, uh, there are absorption features. Yeah, so although it's black, yeah, it's black because of the stretch. Yeah, so it doesn't mean that, the, the, that there are no absorption features, but they're relatively shallow. Yeah, but there's still this aluminum hydroxyl feature here. Okay. Um, oh, there was a question, what's the abundance of, of kaolinite in the image? Um, well, we checked this one uh, before. And this is one of the, uh, the end members. That's uh, number, that's uh, end member C. Um, you can see that there's kaolinite here. Uh, you can check other pixels as well. Uh, but there, there are not many, many pixels that have clearly kaolinite. So the abundance of kaolinite is relatively low. All right. So, um, yes, we, we have now done this, this exploratory analysis um, of, this, of this pebble. Um, and we have seen different end members. Um, yeah, you can you can see that there are, along these veins, um, we find uh, muscovite with a relatively short uh, absorption uh, wavelength um, in the in the uh, in the porphyritic wall rock. Yeah, we have a longer wavelength illites and uh, and some kaolinite. Um, uh, 
uh, we have seen some some tourmaline spectra. Yeah, so um, these these black uh, the black dots here, um, and um, well, if we look at the association of uh, yeah of, of of tourmaline and and, and calcopyrite, it's 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 mostly with uh, with these quartz uh, with quartz veins. Uh, and, and also some association with the, with the, the muscovites. Um, yeah, that's in the, that, that is formed along these fractures. Um, and that's also what, what comes out of, of statistical analysis. The copper content is uh, best predicted by uh, uh, the presence of, of muscovite in these rocks. And uh, yeah, so, so white micas, elite muscovites with a relatively short wavelength position, but also with an, uh, a deep aluminium hydroxyl feature relatively to the, the water feature, so high crystallinity. Okay, and then there are two other things that we can now do. They are optional in the in the instructions. The first one is uh, uh, calculation of the, the relative depth of the uh, um, no, actually, the relative proportions of, of elite muscovite over kaolinite uh, by looking at um, uh, the wavelength position of two uh, absorption features. Oh, actually, I, I should say it different, differently. So we make a band ratio, which are influenced by the presence of, the, of this the second uh, absorption feature of kaolinite. Yeah, so we calculate um, the ratio of um, of the value at 2162, and we divide that by the one at 2180. And you can imagine that uh, uh, the lower the value, the deeper this uh, second absorption feature, so uh, the higher the likelihood that we have kaolinite. So let's do that. We can do that also in, uh, here in Hippie. Um, Uh, for that, we have to open uh, a band ratio uh, dialog box. So we go to tools, um, band ratio. Uh, the input file is again the, uh, uh, the hyperspectral image, which is, um, let's see, here. And then we want to make a band ratio between. Uh, these two reflectance bands, reflectance, reflectance bands, yes. Yeah, so 2162, uh, which is here, and 2180, which is here at this relative height. Um, let me see. Yeah, we can uh, keep this uh, this name, so we say run. Okay, and then we can look at the result. Ratio. This doesn't look very good. So, okay, we have to stretch it. Let's do a histogram equalization. Okay, um, so the high values mean that there is no kaolinite, but only elite muscovite. Yeah, you can see that here along these fractures, what we already knew. Um, yeah, so we have values of 1.2, yeah, 1.2, and 1.2, okay. Um, but in, in areas where we have a very low value, for instance here, 0 0.99, and that's where you had the kaolinite. Uh, so that could be indications of uh, of the presence of, of kaolinite. Yeah, you always have to look at the spectra. Um, um, but there are probably also false uh, false positives. Yeah, so other areas where we also have low values, but because of other minerals. Um, so um, we can check by making a shadow image. Click here, oh, and then indeed, I'll do it again. We get an, uh, a kaolinite here. 
Um, but let's check this area as well. Okay, yeah. So there's some indications of kaolinite here also, although it's more an inflection point. It's no clear kaolinite. Okay, that is one. Um, yeah, so this is another way we, you can call it a, a summary product or um, um, and, um, a spectral parameter that, show, that shows one specific aspect of the reflectance spectra, and yeah, that's illite relative to kaolinite. Um, and then there's another one that, uh, that we can uh, calculate. Oops. Um, and that is uh, the crystallinity of illite muscovite, yeah? where we look at the, the relative depth of the aluminium hydroxyl feature and, uh, and the water feature. Let me open the hyperspectral image first again. Uh, so if we look, take a spectrum, uh, it is the depth of, of this, uh, this feature um, over this feature. And the deeper this feature, we say, well, informally, the higher the crystallinity. Uh, so a muscovite has a higher crystallinity than, for instance, illite or even montmorillonite, but we don't have any montmorillonite in this, in this rock. Um, okay, so this feature was already calculated uh, in the wavelength image between 2.2200 uh, uh, and 2400, uh, but this feature we still have to calculate. Um, and we do that again using uh, step one, wavelength of minimum. The input file is this pebble again. Um, now we have to give it a different name because otherwise it will override the other one the previous uh, wavelength image so it's between 1850 and uh, 2000 yeah so um, i have to indicate that here also okay we only need one one feature only the deepest then we click run and then we have to wait again, not too long. Um, okay, while it is doing that, then I will already show you the next step. Um, so we want to calculate uh, the, 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 the ratio between these two uh, band depths or absorption feature depths. Uh, we do that on, uh, using band math here. Uh, band math. And then we have to we have to enter a formula here. Um, the expression is in the instructions. It says uh, so: um, image one, uh, band one, yeah, because band zero is the the wavelength position, and band one is the the depth of the deepest feature, and then we divide it by image two, and then again the depth uh, band. All right, um, and then I have to open here or add the two, the two images. Um, yes. Go here, porphyry copper pebble. Yeah, so this is the wavelength image between 2100 and 2400. Yeah, there we need the depth. And then after that, we add this one between well, the wavelength image of the other wavelength range. We select both. Oh, and we have to give it an output name. Oh, wrong folder. Um, what did I say here? Okay. There's no suggestion of what we should call it. What we'll call it. Crystallinity. Okay. Okay. And then we can run it. That's fairly quick. 
and display the results here. So this, this other, the wavelength image was already finished. Eh? You've seen that. Well, we can also have a look at that, what that looks like. Um, let's do that first. Yeah, so first, um, this wavelength image. So this is what it looks like. And this is the depth. And you can see that uh, the areas that are dark, the, the water feature is shallow. And the areas that are bright and gray, the absorption feature is, is deeper. Okay, but now we're going to look at the, the crystallinity image. This one. Okay, and then we get this. Yeah, and uh, well, it confirms already what we've seen before, that uh, along these fractures here and here, uh, there we have uh, illite muscovite of a high crystallinity, so that's muscovite, and then yeah, in the wall rock, it's, it's low crystallinity. Uh, of course, you have to be careful with this here. This is a zone with a lot of quartz. This contains uh, tourmaline and the same here. So there, the crystallinity values do, don't apply uh, only to elite muscovite uh, minerals. Um, right, yeah, so this is another spectral indicator that, that tells you something about the, the subtle mineralogical differences in, in the image, in the rock, actually. Um, and then you can, for all these uh, these points A to G, you can uh, extract uh, that information and, uh, well, enter it in this table. Um, now you can see that uh, elite muscovite relative to kaolinite is low here. For the kaolinite sample, for the rest, it's higher. Uh, the crystallinity is highest for, for muscovite here, 9. Point something, and here for the number for F, it's, it's five. The crystallinity is lower for uh, for elite, but also for well, for kaolinite, and um, yeah, and, and the two others which are gray here, so you do not really have to calculate those. Um, and in the last column, I added uh, some comments on, on the, the type of elite muscovite uh, based on uh, the wavelength position of the, the deepest feature. <coughs> Okay, um, so now I've come to the end of this uh, review of this uh, tutorial. It was quite long, it's about an hour. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, but you can always, uh, if you're interested and if you want to see if what you've done was right or um, if you made the tutorial yourself, then uh, you, can, uh, you can view it in, in various uh, Parts, various episodes. Um, so, all right. So, well, thank you for watching this this tutorial. Yeah, I hope that it was useful and, uh, and that you enjoyed it and that you learned something from it because that's that's of course uh, uh, the idea behind uh, following these uh, these tutorials. Okay. Goodbye. Hope to see you again soon. Cheers.